so I, how, how about I go a little bit about my background? So, you know, I was born in Scotland and, um, and my family ran a takeaway business and, um, and uh, my mom and dad basically let me do whatever I wanted to do. And I, 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 I love art. I think uh, I just constantly painted. So I, I decided to go to art school without realizing what the outcome would be going to art school. I think uh, going to art school really gave me a good foundation of understanding. The art school was really good. It had multimedia and I could do fine arts if I wanted to. So I think it was a good base when I decided that after art school, and grown up in Scotland, my entire life I've been in Scotland, is to make a complete change and go all the way to Hong Kong and see what it's like to actually, you know, work in Hong Kong. And I think with my kind of background, I applied myself both in production and I started shooting, like, you know, working for a company called Salon Films. We did a lot of production work, but at the end of the day, I really wanted to try out what animation uh, was about. So I entered into the world of animation through central digital pictures. And then uh, there I got to explore what it's like to work for commercials. And um, but I think finally, after being in, in that kind of industry for a few years, I realized I, 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 I was very good with people. And I felt like being an animator, you always seem to be confined to the office, you know, uh, and, and uh, to you and your computer as well, that was like, you know, um, so I decided to try producing. And so for a number of years, I, I wanted to see what it was like to try and get to, you know, uh, be able to make films for myself and be creative that way. And so um, it took me quite a while to get to where I am right now. And, 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 and I had a lot of, uh, Hong Kong was great because it seems like a pool of everything. It seems like People don't mind if you've worked a bit in commercials, you know, you've worked a bit as an animator, you know, you've worked a bit in movies. As they seem to be okay if you're versatile. So I think Hong Kong really gave me a good um, kind of sense of um, a foundation to be able to apply myself now being a fully fledged filmmaker and having a few films, you know, under my belt. I, I feel like uh, 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 Hong Kong really, and made me the filmmaker that I am today. I think it's all relative. I mean, I think uh, at least me being a producer right now, um, I've been through the different stages of being a filmmaker. Like I, I started off as a runner, you know, production assistant, and you're basically making cups of teas and stuff for, for producers and directors, you know, and uh, they see how hard working I was, but like, it took me a very long time before I had my first chance of producing uh, a script which I really believed in, you know, and, uh, and that, that, that really changed the dynamics of who I am now today and having that uh, privilege to be able to just read scripts, you know, and, and assess them and seeing if I want to help realize that into a movie you know, and so it's, uh, I think it's like a long slog of 20 years, but uh, I think I think Hong Kong really was, it is a place where they don't mind you being versatile. So I think everything is all relative. And so with me having a foundation in art, you know, I find myself with projects. I don't mind stepping back into doing commercial stuff. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's all, uh, it's, it's, it's all skills which I can apply to these different elements. Uh, being a filmmaker now, um, it's, all, it's all just the same. It's like a longer commercial to me, you know. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I only officially own this word producer in, in my title for the past maybe five or six years. Uh, it has changed in the sense that you're right. At the end of the day, making a movie, you it is a business in itself. You're taking an investor's money, and then um, you're making a product, and uh, you're going to try and sell the product, and you you want to be able to, you know, uh, rec recuperate the amount of money that you got from the investor. And um, what has changed? Uh, I've done a bit of everything. So, like, I think. I think everyone in the film industry know 
we have different types of producers, right? We have producers who's really good with finding investors, and you have producers who are very good at making it happen, you know, in terms of production and logistics and stuff. And then you have the type of producers, which is connections, right? It's, it's, it will help with the distribution part, you know, and have maybe connections with film festivals, you know. And, 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 and so for me, I am very lucky. I've had opportunity of all these different roles as being a producer that has made me a more rounded producer. So when I take on a project, uh, uh, I already have had experience in finding money, in distribution, you know, in actual physical making of the product. Uh, for me, the easiest part of being a producer, being a producer, is actually making the actual product. I find that the money side is 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 hard, and the distribution side, but actually filming side. To me, it just comes naturally. Like I go on a film set, I know what's going to happen. I know if I need to solve problems, I solve it. You know, I'm that type of producer that really is hands-on, want to be there, out in the deck, you know, in the rain, you know, in the sun. You know, that's that's the type of producer that I find myself really uh, excel in. Um, the other stuff, it, it's hard. It's hard. It, it's not easy. I think the hardest part of making a movie is definitely trying to find right investor for your film. I'm sure you've read my portfolio. Most of my films are considered indie. Yeah. Um, indie, independent, why? Because they exist outside the studio, of the norm of the studio. Studios as in the Hollywood norm studios, right? And so most of the films that I, I, I produce uh, are considered what they call independent productions, right? So um, I, I'm not quite sure about Hong Kong, why uh, we never managed to get together, but for me, for sure, um, one of my movies called um, I Miss You When I See You, that we really literally made it for very indie costs, like my co budget, I would say. And I think that gave me an opportunity to explore independent musicians. And, and, and one of my favorite things about this movie, and I was just talking about this movie yesterday, and we made it about maybe three or four years ago now, I think three years ago. And um, the music is just amazing. I mean, he wrote the music from scratch, watched the film, you know, and, 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 and he's a musician, you know, and I, I generally, when the director and I met with him, we were like, wow, it's just like, cannot believe that this, this, this guy writes such amazing music, but never really given a platform to be able to, to um, for people to really realize who he is as, as, a, as a musician. And so um, I, I think for me, one of, one of my favorite part about the film is not only the film part, but the music really brought it, brought it alive. And I think when you make um, and the moving image, you have to, it's, it, it goes hand in hand. I think you, you can't have a really good moving image without music. I, I'm very fortunate that I do have people in the independent music scene here in Hong Kong, and I slowly have realize that they also don't really get, I mean, you know, they don't really get an opportunity to be really, you know, to, for people to realize who they are, who, who they are, you know, uh, you know, you, we, we also have limited venues as well. And obviously during COVID, it's, it's even more difficult being a musician and a filmmaker, right? Uh, so I would love an opportunity to help realize any independent uh, musicians out there could, put this combination together, I'm sure it'd be uh, fantastic. And I totally understand what you're saying when you see this in Denmark and other countries. Because I mean, at heart, I, I'm, so, I'm still Scottish. I see it happening over there. And so I cannot apply over here in Hong Kong. And I, I think um, um, I think we just need to get together and really just like during these COVID times, I think we need to just like, just, just have that opportunity, maybe synergize and maybe something might come out of it. So I'm more than, Happy if this is a proper proposition here, I would be more than happy to be able to apply my filmmaking skills to the to the music industry, especially the independent music industry. But I do see a lot of uh, small independent music videos being made, and my friends are moving into that. Like I see a few of my friends and uh, uh, helping these smaller um, uh, musicians to make these very nice niche, like kind of microfilms or what we call short films. You know, 
and 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 they're they're very very alternative, you know. And I like that. I like I like seeing my friends, you know, uh, exploring in that medium. And I think it's more flexible as well with the independent musicians out there. It, they definitely they're more versatile. They're more open to 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 something different, you know, like that you won't get, you know, with a more commercial commercial artist, right? So um, I think maybe that is that is the uh, the the issue there. You just need to get together. Like. I grew up watching David Lynch. It Twin Peaks boggled my mind. I think like, um, but I, I was very compelled to continue watching it. Just just the visual aesthetic. I, I don't think as a as a teenager I actually understood what was happening. But I would watch it visually because it was just mind boggling and you're just like, I want to see what the next episode is going to hold, you know, and it, and it had all these crazy characters, which you can't quite pinpoint. And even when you got to the end of the series, you're like, what did I just watch? <laughs> like, you know, and I love that. And I think Twin, Twin Peaks did do a new season, maybe two years ago. I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch it. I think a lot, I, I saw a lot of my friends, um, five days ago, whatever, were like all excited. It's like, oh wow, it's like Twin Peaks again. Is it going to really, you know, be another mind bending kind of series? And it was. And uh, some of the hardcore fans, obviously, they were like, oh, I'm not quite sure about it. But for me, it was a more up to date version, you know, using new technology and um, visuals to realize more of what's. Um, what the filmmaker wants to say. Um, I, I'm a I'm a huge fan, and I love I love like man popular films like that, you know. And I think um, I think I, I think it it gathered more fans. I think it definitely put David Lynch back on there, and, and hopefully the younger generation can see that you know what, like films are, they don't really need to make sense. Sometimes it's just like I, I just want to watch something that just takes you away from this. COVID world right now, why not, you know, uh, if, you can, if, you, if you can convince an investor to give you money to make a film like that, why not? I think it sounds amazing. I, I, I grew up with these idols and it's, it's so sad that they're not with us anymore, but I think um, if we can somehow bring these three people back and put them together on the screen and be able to make some kind of content like that. I, I think tickets would sell out in, in seconds. I mean, literally, I mean, these three icons together, it's just, just wow. I mean, even just you mentioned those three names together in one sentence, it, it's just blown my mind. I, I, don't, I don't think you need much in, in the sense of the story. It's just like three people together are already like, wow, you just want to sit not 20 minutes, and probably an hour and a half with these three people. It is visibility. So, you know, I don't, I don't want people, I, I think, I think uh, one of the reasons uh, a lot of media is misrepresentation of our queer community, like, you know, um, you know, like, queer characters are, are serial killers, you know, are, you know, things like that. It's like, for me, I have to make change as a producer and be very mindful what I'm reading on paper is good representation of the community that I, I represent. You know, I'm very much, you know, I, I work for the Hong Kong Lesbian Gay Film Festival, you know, and when we selectively choose films around the world, and I've seen in the past five or six years, uh, been, you know, incredible uh, films have been made and we have more and more choices. Uh, I, I I feel you know this year I we 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 went out specifically to try and find content that a little bit like more lighthearted, but these are good representation because you you find a lot of these filmmakers either like has transgender actors you know actresses or written by queer filmmakers as well. So so these these people are very mindful of what they're writing. It's, it's them you know they're they're putting themselves you know, on the big screen, but, you know, representation is, is very important. John Waters is, is a little bit out there for me. I'm not sure about John Waters. Oh, I, I like his work, it's a lot of fun, but um, he's, 
he's not everyone's cup of tea, but uh, he's great. He's great fun. He makes great content as well. He's a lot of fun. Yeah. I think it does. I, th I think you need to embrace it. I think uh, I've come from an age where there was no social media, right? No mobile phones. Uh, and and I, I made movies. I started my career making movies on 35 mil, right? Everything was like, whoa, you need to wait before things come out, you know, editing, blah, blah, blah. but now everything's just so instant. There's a lot of crap out there, uh, but there's actually if you look carefully, there is actually really good content out there. And, and I'm all for, I did a panel last week for the Hong Kong Literary International Film Festival, F F F Festival and they asked a question about embracing the di digital age. I, I, I think, you know, um, born when I was born in the 70s, I, I think we need to move with the times. And I think I, 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 I would love to, you know, with the right project, I'm more than happy to, to you know, use 35 mm, but I think with the new digital age, it gives a lot of uh, flexibility in the way we tell stories. And I think during COVID times, what I saw a lot of, and you saw actors doing is, they made their own little short films, but it was the content that really made it. It wasn't really like, like technically, they, didn't, they weren't DPs or anything, but it was just the way they delivered their dialogue and they wrote things between them. It was just so much fun to watch because there was nothing else to do said, why not just make some, some fun social media stuff, you know, for people to enjoy. And it was just fantastic. And I just saw these actors just like doing these little plays, but they weren't even in the same space. They were just like writing these things. And, and I think it's great. And, and these are like A-class actors we're talking about, you know, and I think we need to, we need to move at the time. So I think social media is a great way of promotion, promoting my, my movie, my last movie, Go Back to China, which I released last screening was last week, uh, two weeks ago. And we use, rely heavily on social media and word of mouth on, on, on trying to get, you know, people to come to see the film because we're a small independent production. The only famous actor we might, you know, might, people might have heard of here in Hong Kong is Richard Ng. I don't know, you know, Richard Richard's like a veteran. And you know what, there was these kind of like, you know, um, um, grannies and granddads would come and say, oh yeah, I'm going to see this film because of Uncle Richard, like Richard, because you know, I, I saw the film last week, but I just thought it'd be fun to bring my other friends because it's such a lighthearted film. I think we need films like that. It's like, we support Hong Kong films and they were like, they were so cute. And it was just really lovely to see them go and see my film like that. So yeah, I think we need to move for the times and I think digital social media is a good thing. There is a lot of bad things though. We need to know when to switch off and, you know, and, 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 and limit yourself. You have to limit yourself, you know.